I'm a big believer that eBay is one of the greatest things to come from the internet age. I mean, there's always so much interesting and off-the-wall stuff for sale. And besides, where else am I going to get my Soviet military surplus or fusion laser optics? Now, unfortunately, eBay has a lot of rules against selling hazardous items, and these can be incredibly annoying for those of us who like to play with dangerous stuff. So that means if you're looking to buy things like cyanide or depleted uranium, you're going to have to go to other websites. In terms of lasers, eBay bans the sale of handheld lasers stronger than 5 milliwatts. Now, unfortunately, this is a lot less than the power you need to light stuff on fire. Now, this also happens to be the federal limit in the United States for the sale and import of handheld lasers. So, in fact, anything stronger than this is actually illegal except under special circumstances. But honestly, this isn't even that horrible of a rule because anything stronger than 5 milliwatts can do permanent damage to your eyes faster than you can blink. Now, the thing is, overseas sellers obviously don't care about our laws, but they still do have to follow eBay's guidelines. But it turns out they actually found a very easy way around these. All they have to do is say that their lasers are eye safe, then they can continue to pump out blinding lasers to kids all over the world. Because what could possibly go wrong there? I went on eBay and bought two blue laser kits for about 50 bucks a piece. And now I know what you're thinking. Why on earth would I show myself breaking federal law on video? Well, I didn't break the law. The listings explicitly stated that the power output was under 5 milliwatts. I paid money for two low power legal lasers and nothing else. And to top it off, I actually found U.S. sellers for these kits. So in the event that they turn on overpowered, it shifts the blame to them because it's not illegal for me to just own a high-powered laser. Here I've opened up the boxes to see what's inside. Now the lasers themselves are different styles, but the kits are essentially identical. They come with some lithium-ion batteries, a charger, and some diffraction gratings. Now each set also comes with a pair of laser goggles, which is a good idea in theory, but you'd have to be a total idiot to trust these things to protect your eyes. Now before I fire these up, I'm going to put on my own goggles from a legit source because I don't know about you guys, but I certainly value my eyeballs a lot more than whoever found the cheapest way to put together these kits. Now personally, I like goggles from Survival Lasers. I know I'm not getting paid to say that, I just simply like their stuff. In fact, I'll never accept payment to promote any sort of laser safety gear. Now that being said, sponsors are a great way to fund all my crazy ideas and projects, and I want to give a big thank you to War Robots for sponsoring this video. War Robots is an awesome strategy 6v6 multiplayer warfare game where two teams battle it out in real time with their own personalized war machines. Now this game has amazing 3D graphics and a huge variety of specialized robots and weapons to choose from. Help support my crazy projects by downloading and playing this free game for your phone. Download the game using my link below and you'll get a welcome bonus pack which includes the GI patent robot and a unique skin for it. You'll also get a full set of weapons as well as 100 gold and 400,000 silver which will give you a huge head start when you start playing. War Robots has over 100 million players around the world and is constantly being updated with new robots, new maps, and new weapons. You get to choose how the game unfolds as there's over 50 robots to choose from and weapons that fit whatever playstyle you like. The developers are even working on a huge new update where you'll be in charge of a whole squad of pilots with over 20 different characters to choose from. So what do you say? Let's play. All right, let's jam in some batteries and see just how eye safe these things really are. And here we go. What the? Why won't it work? So it turns out the switch on this thing is complete and utter garbage. But this thing seems to work all right. And what can I say? Contrary to what it said in the listing, eye safe is not how I would describe this. In fact, it's probably so far over the safety limit that it's laughable. I definitely would not want to be hit in the eyes by this. After a bit more percussive maintenance, I was able to get this laser working again, but I wouldn't exactly count on it lasting a long time. So what can you do with these extremely dangerous lasers? Well, a lot of things. That is, if you like setting things on fire. When properly focused, this laser can burn and cut through several different materials due to the high power density it produces. It can light matches, It can ignite flash paper. It can cut through electrical tape. Mmm, smoked plastic. Now it won't ignite my propane tank, but it can pop balloons with ease. That was pretty fun. They can also burn your frickin' eyes out with ease. Nowadays, a lot of people get eye injuries from lasers that turned out way stronger than advertised. In fact, we should measure just how strong these lasers really are. 
Here I have this really nice Pronto Laser Power Meter by Gentech EO. Now it's going to tell me exactly how strong these lasers are. And here we go. So well over a watt there. 1.5 watts actually. Yeah, so it's literally hundreds of times stronger than advertised. Let's check out this other one here. And... So they're about the same, so they're very, very powerful. Now, if these things were in a lab, they'd have to be bolted to a table in a locked room, and you'd need hours of laser safety training before even coming near them. So these things are definitely not toys. The kits also come with a set of diffraction gratings that are commonly called star caps by the sellers. Now they mount on top of the laser and split up the beam to many different patterns. I know I have to admit, the effects are downright beautiful on camera, but having several laser beams shooting all over the place isn't exactly safe. Some of the individual beamlets can still be strong enough to cause eye damage, even if they're just a fraction of the initial power of the beam. Just one third of one percent of the output is all it takes to damage your eyes faster than you can blink. I obviously have nothing against owning a high power laser. In fact, I think lasers are a great hobby, but selling something like this as eye safe is appalling. Now you may think it's obvious to be careful with something like this, but some sellers say that you can use this for presentations or playing with your cats. Now that's obviously a terrible idea, as even just looking at the spot on the wall without goggles can do permanent eye damage. You make just one mistake with one of these, and it's lights out forever. Now I know what you're thinking. Is it possible to make these even stronger? Now the answer is obviously yes, although it isn't exactly easy and you definitely shouldn't do it. But honestly at this point I'm just kind of curious what kind of stupid powers I could get out of these if I, you know, just tear it down and replace some of the parts inside. So yeah, without further ado, let's get started. Here I've laid out my tools to start surgery on the laser. I'm not even going to bother with static protection today, because as far as I'm concerned, the laser is already defective. The laser casing comes apart with ease to expose the internal laser module. And now there could definitely be improvements to the way this module fits into the casing, because as it stands, there's a ton of empty space and poor thermal contact between the laser module and the case. And now before you ask, yes, the mod I'm about to do is legal for me, as the federal regulations don't ban me from building strong lasers. I just can't import or sell something like this as well as a giant list of other things I can't do with it. The most power limiting component in this device is definitely the laser diode. Now I could just try driving it way harder, but really this wouldn't give me that much of a power boost, and would probably just fry the laser diode. So I decided to replace the stock laser diode with this much stronger one. And now the stock one is really jammed in there, and since I'm not exactly feeling very patient today, I think I'm just going to knock it out of there. And now I gotta admit, I definitely feel guilty taking a hammer to Nobel Prize winning technology. Although I actually think I removed it intact, but I already have hundreds of similar laser diodes in hand, so it wouldn't exactly be devastating if I broke it. I've mounted the new laser diode by press fitting it in a copper heatsink and attaching some leads. Now I really wish I would have known about silicone wire when I first started messing with electronics, because it's just so easy to work with, and it bends instead of shearing off connections when it's twisted. Now here I've had to drill out the host a bit to fit the new heatsink. Then I added a case wire to bring power through the host itself to the laser. The puny driver in this thing isn't nearly strong enough to power the new beast, so I've stripped off all the components to use as a mount for a commercial buck driver. And now the driver fits on nicely, but unfortunately the anodizing on the host threads prevents the casing from conducting the way I had intended. But luckily just drilling a hole in the laser module and then directly soldering the case lead here is a really easy fix. The laser just screws back together at this point. Now I'm not exactly sure how this switch is going to hold up to the higher current demands, but I'm just going to cross my fingers and hope it doesn't explode. And now if I wasn't a lazy piece of garbage, I would have just used a MOSFET to handle the power switching here. Now I guess the last thing to do is swap out the batteries, as these cheap stock lithium ions will not cut the current demands of the new setup. Alright, let's see if this thing even works. But first I'm going to fire up this one for reference. Okay, so it's still strong. Now how about this one? Oh wow, that's way stronger. In fact, can you hear that? Little pieces of the desk are exploding off when the laser hits. Wow, there's actually a little fireball shooting off the surface. It's probably easier for me to see through the goggles than on camera, but wow, that's ridiculous. That's so scary. I want you guys to be able to see this fireball effect, so I'm going to put some goggles over the camera. That way you guys have a better view of what's going on. Alright, here we go. Oh wow, that's ridiculous. That is some serious power. It just forms a plasma on the surface like nothing. Wow. It's amazing that a laser of this power can be built into a handheld device. That's so cool. Now I feel like the camera just isn't doing a great job at showing how much stronger this thing is now. 
So I'm going to put it on the laser power meter. Alrighty, so it's, uh, okay, so it's over 5 watts, about 5.5 watts. So it's actually several times stronger than what it was originally. And now it's funny because I actually built this thing to be quite a bit stronger than this. So I was actually wanting 8 watts. But I guess the uh, driver and battery combination just can't quite get that laser diode to its full power. Well, I guess now the only tests that are left are to uh, see what it can burn and destroy. So here's a CD case. Oh, wow, that's so fast. My goodness. It cuts right through it like butter. Let's see how fast it'll cut holes through cardboard. Or <laughs> light it on fire, that works too. Let's try it against a plastic cup. Oh, wow. Keeps lighting on fire. Okay, this is awesome. Ah, look at that. It's amazing. Wow. Alright, here I'm going to try lighting a match the hard way. So, I'm going to point it here at the match stick, not the uh, actual match head there, and try to get that to catch on fire. Oh, it's almost there. And, oh, there it goes. Cool. Alright, let's give tape another go. Wow, slices right through that. That's amazing. I wonder if it's going to cut soldering wire. I'm definitely going to get behind my camera's viewfinder for this one. And we'll do it. Oh, it's close. Oh, wow. That's amazing. I would not have expected to melt something so shiny. This one should be easy. Here's a candle. Yeah, piece of cake. That's like the world's fanciest candle lighter. I like it. I wonder what it'll do to this cashew. Mmm. I love the smell of roasted nuts. I <laughs> caught on fire. That's so cool. Alright, I got one more dumb one. Let's see if it can give my arm a haircut. Oh, oh wow. I can feel it burning the hairs right off. The key to not getting third degree burns is by not letting it touch the skin. Oh wow, that's awesome. Such a high tech method of shaving. Ouch! Gosh, it's such a shame these things are so incredibly dangerous, because they're really, really cool. Alright, so I feel I may give some mixed messages with this video, so I want to clarify a few things. So first off, if I didn't beat it into your heads earlier, these things, even unmodified, are incredibly dangerous, and I don't recommend buying one. In fact, if you're interested in experimenting around with lasers, that's awesome, because lasers are a very educational hobby, and there's so much to learn from them. But don't start with something as powerful as this. That is just a, that is just a terrible idea. In fact, by the time I had built a laser as strong as this one, I had been tinkering with lasers for over five years. And granted, the technology wasn't available to me when I started this hobby, but I'm really, really thankful that I had all this time to learn about laser safety and just the basics of handling lasers before I ever messed with something so extreme. Alright, before I end this video, I gotta give you guys a tour of my new shop. Now, I couldn't have gotten this place without all the help from my Patreon supporters and my new sponsors, so a big thank you to you guys. And since the last time I posted, I've gotten a ton of new awesome stuff like all these giant Soviet vacuum tubes and capacitors and I got more high energy laser optics and crystals up here. There's going to be so many cool things coming from this channel very, very soon. And it's funny because the only thing that's really slowing me down at this point is actually shooting the videos because I've been working on so many awesome projects recently. Having a 100 amp panel is a really nice change from my last place because having more power is always a good thing. The videos from my overclock series on YouTube are probably my most popular right now. And believe it or not, this is actually just a driver for the uh, next episode of that series. And yeah, I got very, very carried away. There's parts from like seven microwaves on there. And you're never going to guess when I'm using it to power up. Check out this awesome plug that I have. It's definitely one of my favorite cores. I mean, look how thick that is. And oh yeah, it goes to my 100 watt Q-switch screen laser. I've been going through a ton of microwaves recently. And now I'm down to just two. So I'm definitely going to need more microwaves. I mounted some of my laser guns on the wall over here. One of these is a moth. That's about it for this video, but until the next time, stay safe and happy lazing.